Up to now, we have looked at the simplest data structure in R, the vector. In this clip, we will introduce a more complex structure, the data frame, which combines two or more vectors and which resembles a table that you may know from spreadsheet programs. Data frames are very important data structures for many of our linguistic purposes. Suppose we have a group of five students and information on their gender, age, and their performance on some uni exam. We can enter the information into separate vectors. First, we create a vector of the students' names using the C function and putting the names in quotes. So names assigned C, Agatha, comma, Bert, comma, Charlotte, comma, Dick, comma, Edith. Next, we can create the vector of the student's gender. So gender, C, female, male, female, male, female, and a vector for the age, age, 23, 25, 24, 28, and 20, as well as their exam performance as a score, 49, 53, 98, 84, 75. Now we have four vectors, each of length five, where the first elements contain the data for Agatha, the second elements, the data for Bert, and so on. To combine the four elements into a data frame, we use the function data.frame, which takes as arguments the vectors you want to combine into the data frame. So we create a vector, my students, data frame, names, gender, age, and score. This created an object named my students, which in RStudio shows up in your environment pane under data, together with the information that it contains five observations, that's our five students, of four variables, name, gender, age, and score. You can click on the blue arrow to expand the object information and glance at the structure of the object. We see two so-called factor variables, name and gender, and two numerical variables, age and score. The number of levels tells us how many different names there are or how many different values there are for the variable gender. You can display the content of the My Student data frame in two ways. One is to type My Students at the console, which returns the data frame in the console. The other option is to click the grid symbol, which opens a new pane on the top right. Note that by clicking the grid symbol, what R actually did was execute the view function with the name of the data frame as an argument. The view command is what you can use if you do not work in RStudio and if you don't have access to something similar on the top right pane. There are three helpful commands that you can use to inspect the structure of a data frame. One is str my students for the structure which provides pretty much the same information as you see up in the top here. And this is again a very useful command if you're not in RStudio. We'll talk about the other two options of inspecting data frames in two clips when we have a slightly more complex data frame. This way of creating a data frame is nice, but actually very clumsy because you have to enter all the data into the vectors individually. And more often than this, you will be working with much larger data sets that you created in a spreadsheet program and which you will then want to import into R. So we will briefly discuss how to save your data from spreadsheet software programs and prepare them for the import into R.